Chapter 3 Deacon Deacon struggled to push the memories of Shonda from his mind. Her eyes were so full of fear that he longed to pull her into his arms again and tell her everything would be okay. But they didn't have that relationship anymore. You ready to go back then? She nodded and then pressed her lips together. I know I asked you to come, but you can't stay at the house. I'll help pay for a hotel room, though. He shook his head. Don't worry about it. I didn't expect to stay with you. I don't think that would be good for either of us. Thank you for understanding. Her eyes dropped to her lap, and silence filled the cab of the truck for a moment before she looked up again. Her eyes were like dying embers covered with a layer of soot, heartbroken as if she'd cried out her soul and had nothing left, or as if she'd locked it away so she couldn't feel it. You don't think I'm crazy, do you? She looked so weary, so broken. There was no doubt in his mind that something was going on. Shonda had always been fashionable, not obsessed, but aware of style and what looked best on her. Her dark hair, which had always been stylish, now looked flat and lifeless, and her eyelids had bags under them as if she hadn't slept in days. He didn't know what was going on, but he definitely didn't believe she was crazy. No, I don't think you're crazy. I just hope I can help. The ride back to her house was quiet, but it gave him time to think. He felt like a fish out of water. It had been so long since he'd been a cop that it felt like a lifetime ago, and he wasn't sure where to start. He dropped Shonda off and then drove to the hotel where he'd reserved a room. As he drove, he rehashed Shonda's words over and over. There were steps he knew he needed to take and some he wouldn't be able to do on his own, but he was worried about the other steps, the ones he didn't know about. Thankfully, he knew there was someone he could call who could fill him in. He pulled into the hotel parking lot, checked in at the tiny lobby, and then made his way to his room. It was basic, but it contained everything he would need. A bed, a small closet area, dresser, table, and bathroom. Though not visually stimulating, it appeared clean, and it even had a small refrigerator, though he doubted he'd be using it much, as he had no way to cook. Tossing his bag on the hotel bed, he fished his phone out of his pocket and dialed Detective Jordan Graves. He'd only known Jordan the last year or so, but Deacon trusted him completely. Detective Graves, Jordan said after the second ring. Jordan, it's Deacon. I need your help. He filled Jordan in on the situation, what little he knew of it, and waited for Jordan's response. Is there anyone in the department there that you trust? I'm not sure. I didn't really keep in touch with anyone here, but there are a few names I could check to see if they're still on. They were good men back then, but it's been years, so even if they are still here, I'm not sure if I can trust them. Jordan sighed on the other end, and Deacon pictured him scratching at the stubble on his face. It was something he often did when he was thinking. Okay, my first advice is meet with whomever you know. Test them and see if you can trust them. Second, go to the local electronic or hardware store and pick up a hidden camera and bug detector and an audio jammer. They won't be as good as the police use, but unless you're dealing with a super high-tech criminal... They should suffice. Use the audio jammer whenever you talk in her house, even if you find no bugs. That should help to jam anything they might have and keep them from hearing you. Deacon listened intently as Jordan explained how best to go about gathering information while also eluding anyone who might be trying to listen in. Okay, that's what I thought. How about the therapist? Is there a way to check him out? If you give me his name, I'll see what I can do. Otherwise, see if you can play the estranged husband who's back in the picture card. If you aren't married, I don't think the therapist has to let you in. Even if you are, I don't guarantee he will, but you'll have more pull. Fake marriage. Deacon chuckled softly, 
thinking back to how close they had come to really getting married. We can probably do that unless he asks for proof. If he does, let me know. I know a hacker who might be able to help. At that, Deacon's brow lifted. You know a hacker? I know a lot of people most would find unsavory. It kind of goes with the job. This one happens to be a CI for us, so they use their talents for good now. Got it. What about protection? Do you think she's in danger? Deacon shook his head, though he knew that Jordan couldn't see it. I honestly don't know. It just seems odd that if she did see a crime and reported it, they wouldn't try to go after her. Yeah, keep an eye out. Watch for suspicious cars, ones that stay parked near her for a long time, or have super dark tenting on the windows. Otherwise, I guess try to accompany her whenever you can. I know you're not a cop anymore, but hopefully you remember some of the training. Yeah, he actually remembered a lot of the training. Plus, firefighters went through a similar, though less specific, training. Still, he couldn't help wishing he was still licensed to carry his firearm. Can I call you if anything else comes up? Of course. And Deacon? Yeah, stay safe. If she really did witness a crime that's being covered up, this might get dangerous quickly. Got it. Deacon ended the call, unpacked the few items he'd brought, and then headed out to find the gadgets and some food. The town had changed since he'd last been there, but not by much. Some shops he remembered were gone, including the ice cream shop he'd loved to stop in after a hard day of work. That was probably for the best. Ice cream wasn't on his meal plan much anymore. The old dollar theater was also gone, replaced by a discount store, and a few new shops had moved in. A liquor store, a smoke shop, and a furniture store he didn't remember. He wondered how the crime in the city was now. Liquor and tobacco didn't always mean more crime, but there was a decent correlation. He stopped in the electronics store first. It was one of those big chain stores, and he wasn't sure he was going to be able to find what he needed. But nestled at the very back among webcams, he found the camera and bug detector. The audio jammer was on the other side of the store, with the few remaining CB radios and boom boxes. It was odd how quickly some things went out of fashion. He remembered boom boxes being all the rage when he was younger, but CD players and then iPods quickly made them obsolete. Now even those two things were hard to find as most people just use their phones to listen to music. He handed his items to the checker and watched as the young man lifted an eyebrow. These are interesting purchases. Don't see them every day. The checker didn't even look old enough to be out of high school. And though he didn't say it, Deacon got the sense that the checker thought he was some kind of pervert. That was a perception he definitely wanted to clear up. Yeah, well, when you're staying in hotels, you can never be too careful. I watched a show the other night about a woman finding a hidden camera behind the mirror in her hotel room. The cashier's eyes widened and his demeanor instantly shifted. Oh man, you're right. I saw that one too. He shook his head as he rang up the purchases. Crazy, right? It's a crazy world, Deacon said, as he handed over the money and took the bag. A crazy world indeed. What were the odds that he would end up back here, that Shonda would need his help? He thanked the cashier and headed to his car, stashing the items under the seat. He doubted anyone was following him, but he had no idea what kind of eyes might be on Shonda. His stomach rumbled as he started the truck, and he pointed it toward his favorite diner, hoping the place would still be there. A tiny smile tugged on the corners of his lips as he pulled into the parking lot. Mama's was still standing, though the near-empty parking lot didn't bode well for their future. As he opened the front door, he was hit with a wave of nostalgia. Music filled the air from the ancient jukebox in the corner, and though the decorations were faded and yellowed, they were the same 50s-themed ones he remembered. Mama's had been one of his favorite places because the woman who owned it had decided that home cooking was the way to go. 
She grew almost all her own ingredients and everything was made daily or sourced from other local grocers. He'd even tried to recreate some of his favorite meals, but they never turned out quite as good as Mama's. Just one tonight? The hostess, a young girl with her blonde hair pulled back into a high pony, asked as he approached the stand. Though she smiled, it didn't quite reach her eyes, and he wondered if it was just the fatigue of a long shift or the worry over lack of customers that affected her. He nodded and followed her to a small table in the corner. Taking a seat, he breathed in the nostalgia from years past. It was strange being here without Shonda, but he had to admit that it was nice to be back. He picked up the menu, which looked old and faded. If it wasn't the same one from nearly a decade ago, it was certainly close. Scanning the offerings, he decided on the chicken fried steak with mashed potatoes and green beans. It was a heavier meal than he usually ate for dinner, but it was also comforting and hearty, and he could definitely use that right now. A few minutes later, the waitress brought out his meal and set it down before him without a word. He thanked her and began to eat, savoring the flavors of home-cooked food. The restaurant wasn't crowded, and other than the music, it was quiet. Deacon sat alone with his thoughts for most of the meal. As he finished up and reached for his wallet, he noticed an old man across the room watching him intently. When their eyes met, Deacon smiled, but the old man just stared at him before turning away again. Deacon frowned as he paid his bill and left the diner. Who was that man, and why had he been staring? Was he a regular who was staring simply because he didn't recognize Deacon? Or could he have followed Deacon from Shonda's? He hadn't seen anyone following him, but he couldn't remember if the man had been there when he entered the restaurant or not. He shook his head to clear the questions. Now he was sounding paranoid, and he had to keep a clear head. Shonda's safety might depend on it.